In this lesson, you're going to learn how to create website layouts very easily using the CSS3 Flexbox model. Flexbox layouts are optimized for user interface design and two-dimensional layouts of any scale. Before we begin coding, let's take a look at the finished product. Our layout uses all new HTML5 elements. So we have the header element, we have a nav element, we have the main element, we have an aside element, and then the footer element. So that way all of the content on your page will be marked up in a nice semantic sort of way. So you can see it's got a nice stretchy fit and it's oh so easy to build. Okay, so get yourself a new example.html file ready and we'll start with the HTML since it's so simple. We're just going to add it all at once. And you can see we've placed a div element and then it has five children inside of it. The header element, the nav element, the main element, a side element, and a footer element. Now these are all called flex items. This div that is their parent is the flex box, the flex container. And we're going to make that so in the CSS. If we take a look at this right now, we'll just have a bunch of words on the page. And they're in boxes, but their boxes aren't styled at all. So in the style element, the first thing we're going to do is target the body element to make its margin zero pixels. That way that little margin space isn't all the way around the page. Then in the next line, we're gonna put body, child, div element, which targets that child div element inside of the body, which is this. And that's gonna become our flex container or our flex box. So we'll do that by setting the display property to a newly added setting for the display property, which is flex. And that's all you have to do to designate that that container is a flex box. And we're also going to add the flex row property with the values of row and wrap. So the direction that all of the elements, all of the flex items will be flowing inside of the flex container will be in the row style, which is on the horizontal plane. And we, and we specify wrap just so that elements will wrap under one another if there's not enough space in the flex box. Now at this point you don't have to worry about the details about these too much because I'm going to lead you guys to pages that I've written already. And these pages are not yet published to developphp.com but they are there and I'm going to give you guys the links in the description of this video. So if you want all the links to learn about all of these properties in depth a little bit more you can just click the links in the description of the video to find them all. And pretty soon I'm going to publish these documents to developphp.com. So that's just if you want to really wrap your head around the whole Flexbox model and see all of the properties that are involved with it. And it'll make you a lot more creative if you have a, a more full understanding. So I'm not going to go too deep in depth with explaining these Flex properties because I've written a bunch of pages already that go in depth describing them. Does that make sense? You can just read those pages. I've documented it all at Develop PHP. You can click the links in the description of the video. Okay, this next style rule is just going to be some basic cosmetics for all of the elements within this flex container. So you can see we're targeting body, child, div, child, header, nav, main, aside, and footer. Targeting all of those with CSS. We're giving them these properties. That way they have that little gray background. They have a little border radius, a little bit of margin space in between them, and then some padding inside of them. Now, let's single out the header with its own little rule here. Now, the first thing we're going to do is set the order, its order of appearance within the flex container. We'll set that to 1, and order is a flex box related property. Then we'll set the height. This is just a normal height setting, 100 pixels, and that's just for the header. And then we're going to set the flex shorthand property to 0 space 1 space then 100 percent and the 100 percent specifies the width of the header and you can investigate the flex property of my site to determine what all of these values stand for now since the header is set to flex let's take a look at what we have all right things are starting to shape up okay next we're going to target the nav element this one here and do a very similar thing to it. I'm going to give it an order of 2 and we're going to set its flex to make it 200 pixels wide. Let's take a look at that. 
Now you can see the navigation element is down here and it's 200 pixels wide. Very good. Now let's do the same thing to the main element. We're going to give it an order of three. Then we're going to set its minimum height to 400 pixels just so you can see that it has a height. While it has no content in it right now, it's not going to have a very tall height. So I just set this property here. This is not a very necessary property. I just set that so it has some height to it. So it gives you the appearance of the layout. But when you start putting real content in this main element, then that's going to be what determines the height. And we set its flex to simply one. Or that might be able to be auto, but one seems to do the trick. Now let's target the aside element, which is the one that kind of represents an ad space or something like that. This one we're going to give order four. And I'm going to change the orders in a minute so you guys can see what that's all about. And we don't have to set a width because the width is actually set in the flex property right here. So we know it's going to be 200. So let's take a look. Now things are really starting to shape up nice. We have our header, our navigation, and our aside element. And the main content stretches. The main section or the main element stretches to accommodate any screen width. Now all we have to do is get the footer in place just right. We're going to give that order of 5. Let's make its height 100 just like the header. And then we're going to set its flex to 100% as well just like the header. That way it spans across the whole screen. Let's take a look at what we have. Here let me put this uh, on maybe 250. There we go. So no matter how much content gets put into this main section, your nav and your aside columns, those are going to stretch along with the main section automatically, which is a nice feature. Now you can get really creative. This is just one type of layout that's a very standard layout. But you can get really creative with the way your flexbox elements are stacked in there and the way they size and things like that. Okay, so just so you know, these links right here are going to be under this video. You can just go right under the video into the description area and click on these links to investigate the flex direction, flex wrap, flex row, order, flex, flex grow, flex shrink, flex basis, justify content, align items, align self, and align content CSS properties. Those are all related to the Flexbox model. So once you click these links and go and research these things, you'll be way better equipped to make awesome layouts and user interfaces. I just want to add real quick that some of you guys might mention that you'll see the aside element goes down. You see? See how some of the elements rearrange themselves when it gets too small? The screen gets too small? So all you have to do is set a minimum width on the uh, the flex box itself so if I go in and I put min width 800 pixels that means the flex box won't get any smaller than 800 pixels you see it stops at 800 that way you can avoid that issue remember any element can have a minimum width the minimum height maximum width and maximum height so play with those too Okay, here's another few last minute tips. You might have other divs in your document that you don't want to be flex boxes. And the way we have this set up, it's going to target all divs in the body element. So what you could do is put div colon nth child and then just put a one there. Now let's see if that targeted everything. Yeah, so we can just go ahead and replace everywhere it says div here with the nth child. That way you're only targeting this specific div. And if you happen to have another div above this div, you can target this div by saying nth child 2. So you can target that div no matter where it lives in the body element by using nth child and whatever number, wherever it is. So we'll just put a 1 since it's the first. And I also said that I would show you how the order works. First let's take a look at it before I change the order of things. So you have a navigation over here and a side over here. I'm going to swap those to put the aside over here and the nav 
over here just by changing the order so let's go to the nav and make that four and make the aside two isn't that awesome now the aside element is over here and the nav element is over here that's a really cool feature okay so i'll leave the order like it is and that's it okay so i hope you guys have fun creating your own unique creative flexbox layouts i'll see you in the next video